so we have seen so far uh, uh, what is a double sideband uh, suppress carrier what is the need to suppress the carrier so in order to improve the power efficiency uh, we are going to go for uh, double sideband with suppress carrier and in this we have two methods of generation one is the balance modulator method so we have dealt in the last class how we can generate uh, using a product modulator uh, the message and the carrier signal that together only with the upper and the lower side bands so now uh, this is the other type of uh, method uh, which is uh, called as a ring modulator we are going to generate a double side band suppress carrier signal so the ring modulator it consists of a four switching diodes so we have four diodes here which are going to uh, switch based on the carrier signal so this four diodes will be controlled by the carrier signal so this c of t it is a periodic signal this is a, a going to act as a carrier waveform so we have the square waveform here you, we have uh, the positive and the negative uh, uh, peaks uh, plus 1 and minus 1 so this uh, frequency is 1 by fc the time period is 1 by fc c of t it represents a square wave which is going to be the carrier signal input is the message signal which is going to be applied here and uh, so these diodes will be switched on and off based on the operating cycle of the carrier waveform so during the positive half of the carrier diodes d1 and d2 will be forward biased and during the negative half of the carrier waveform d d4 and d3 will be forward and d1 d2 will be reverse biased so based on the switching on and off of the diode depend it depends on the carrier signal c of t so finally uh, this carrier signal will be multiplied along with the message uh, signal and we are going to have the output signal here so let us see the operation uh, based on the input uh, that is the carrier input how the diodes are going to work so the diodes act as a perfect switches amplitude and the frequency of the carrier signal is always higher than that of the modulating signal so we know that generally we keep the frequency of the carrier higher so this amplitude adjustment we can adjust based on the modulation index switching operation of the diodes is controlled by the rf carrier signal so we we see here so operating in the positive half cycle of the carrier okay what happens here during the positive half cycle that is c of t plus minus so this d1 and d2 are forward biased so for positive half of the amplitude of the carrier diodes d1 and d2 are forward biased whereas diode d3 and d4 are reverse biased so m of t is multiplied by plus 1 so that is uh, the carrier amplitude here it is positive okay during the positive half it is it is plus 1 so it is multiplied with the message to give m of t so output voltage v not t will be m of t okay and uh, what will happen in the negative half during the second half of the negative half of the carrier the diodes d3 and d4 these are positive forward biased whereas d1 and d2 are reverse biased so that m of t is multiplied by minus 1 so we can see here output v not of t will be equal to minus m of t so now uh, when we are mathematically uh, using the fourier series expansion for uh, the carrier waveform so output voltage will be ultimately the carrier signal multiplied with the message signal so this uh, c of t is a square wave of period 1 by fc and uh, so upon expanding this uh, uh, carrier signal in terms of fourier series expansion so we have this uh, so this uh, cn into e power j2 by fc t so this is fully expanded using the fourier series expansion so this is our fourier series expansion for the periodic waveform that is square waveform so multiplied with m of t so this will this will be our final v not of t so now this uh, n is been substituted for, from minus infinite to plus infinite so taking the positive half here we have uh, after expanding so this is the first term and this is the second term and this into message uh, m of t so now this will be uh, this signal we can't take it as it is we we need to filter certain uh, unnecessary terms so this is been passed to a, a band pass filter with cut off frequency equal to twice of fm cut off frequency fc and bandwidth of uh, twice fm so finally we are having only this first term so 2 4 by pi cos 2 pi fct into m of t so now this will be our uh, carrier signal multiplied with the message signal so we have only the two side bands fc plus fm and fc minus fm terms so this will be our final uh, output of the ring modulator so this will, this will be our uh, double side band with suppress carrier output so this is one of the uh, method for generating our dsbsc waveform so the choice of the carrier frequency of the ring modulator should be fc should be greater than n times of fm so uh, the the period will be n by fc so uh, depending on n value we can choose the carrier frequency okay 
so these are some advantages of ring modulator so it has got a stable output and uh, it requires no external power source to activate the diodes and uh, virtually no maintenance and long life so this is one of the methods we can uh, apply for generating a dsbsc waveform so we'll do some uh, numericals based on dsbsc a 4 gigahertz carrier is double sideband suppressed carrier modulated by a low pass message signal with a maximum frequency of 2 megahertz so here the message signal frequency is 2 megahertz given and the carrier signal frequency is 4 gigahertz you can write down fc equal to 4 gigahertz and fm equal to 2 megahertz so this 4 gigahertz you can express in terms of megahertz either you can express both in giga or both in megahertz range so you can write fc equal to 4000 megahertz and fm equal to 2 megahertz the resultant signal is to be ideally sampled the minimum frequency of the sampling impulse strain should be so the resultant signal should be the modulated signal so we are going to sample the modulated signal so the minimum frequency of the sampling impulse strain should be so we after we modulate the signal we are going to sample it see according to the sampling theorem the sampling frequency should be equal to twice of the maximum bandwidth so first we have to calculate what will be the bandwidth of the uh, modulated waveform bandwidth is generally defined as the difference between the upper and the lower frequencies upper and the lower side bands right so you calculate either we can calculate using the upper and the lower side bands or the bandwidth of the modulated waveform will be equal to twice the maximum modulating frequency right so if you transmit more than one uh, signal modulated waveform so here we have only one fm bandwidth will be 4 megahertz the two side bands fc plus fm will be 4002 megahertz fc minus fm will be 3998 megahertz bandwidth will be 4 megahertz so our sampling frequency should be twice of the bandwidth so it should be 8 megahertz according to the nyquist rate it should be twice of the bandwidth so we have an audio signal and a carrier of m of t equal to 2 cos 1000 pi t plus cos 2000 pi t so this is our message signal m of t carrier signal is 10 cos 10 power 5 pi t write down the expression for the upper side bands of the product signal for am okay so now we need to find what is the resultant signal am signal so we need to multiply both message and the carrier signal using a product modulator so now uh, write down the expression for am so this message uh, write down the message signal carrier signal so write down the modulated signal so now you take the product of the message and the carrier and you have to segregate the uh, upper side band terms and the lower side band terms so upper side band term will be fc plus fm terms so in this we will get two f uh, two terms because since in the message signal we have two terms so we uh, we will have two fc plus fm terms so first you take this cos this term multiply message and the carrier take this inside 10 cos 10 power 5t multiply with the first term multiply with the second term now we have to use our trigonometric identity cos a cos b so this is cos a plus b plus cos a minus b right so here this 10 power 3 and 10 power 5 so we will take this as a, 10 power 5 is the carrier frequency 10 power 3 is the message okay which is this is 10 power 5 is fc and 10 power 3 is fm so accordingly uh, uh, expand the trigonometric identity for this first term similarly here second term this is 2 into 10 power 3 and this is 10 power 5 so 10 power 5 is fc and 2 into 10 power 3 is fm term so accordingly expand this cos a plus b plus cos a minus b expand this uh, using this identity and segregate the positive that is upper upper side band terms lower side band terms so from this uh, you take only the upper side band term 10 cos 101 and 10 power 3 pi t plus 5 cos 102 into 10 power 3 pi t a 400 watt carrier is amplitude modulated to a depth of 100% so here the carrier power is given that is pc pc is the carrier power take it as 400 watt it is amplitude modulated to a depth of 100% so here m equal to 1 so it is 100% means m equal to 1 calculate the total power in case of am so we need to calculate pt which is the total power or the transmitted power in case of the am and dsbsc techniques so if it is going to be conventional am it is dsb with full carrier so it is dsb fc 
or it is named as AM signal and uh, DSBSE technics. We need to calculate PT for these uh, two cases. How much power saving is achieved for DSBSE? So we need to take the difference of the total power in these two techniques, then we can find what will be the power saving. If the depth of modulation is changed to 75%, then how much power is required for transmitting the DSBSC wave? So in case if we change the modulation index, what will be the transmitted power in case of DSBSC waveform? And compare the power required for DSBSC in both the cases and then comment on the reason. So now first calculate what will be the total power. So we know that carrier power is 400 watt, M equal to one. Find what will be the total power in case of AM. So what is the relation now? PT in terms of PC for conventional AM. PT equal to PC into one plus M square by two. So which is around 600 watt. So now you can calculate for the DSBSC case. So what will be the DSBSC? PT will be equal to PC into M square by two. 200 watt. So what will be the power saving? 400 watts. So if you take this difference, so this 400 watt is the power which is saved when we are suppressing the carrier. Okay. So if you include uh, uh, this, uh, the conventional AM, the 400 watt of power will be uh, wasted in, in transmitting the carrier wave. Now, when modulation index is changing, so case two, when modulation index M is 0.75, what will be the transmitted power. So now in the same equation, you change M value as 0.75 and find what will be transmitted power. So this power saving is 400 watt. And uh, when we are changing M is 0.75, it is 112.5 watt. So now still the power transmit power is still reduced when the modulation index is reduced. Okay. So this is what is the uh, reason we can comment here. So when the power required is uh, lower in case of uh, it's, it's lower than M equal to one case. So this infers that the total power in DSBSC depends on the depth of modulation. So when the modulation index is changing, the power transfer power also will change. So it will be maximum, that is one third of the total AM power when M equal to one. And when M is less than one, the transfer power is getting reduced here. So a DSBSC transmitter radiates one kilowatt when the modulation percentage is 60%. So here the transmitted power is given which is one kilowatt, PT is uh, one kilowatt, modulation percentage is 60%, M equal to 0.6. How much of the carrier power is required if you want to transmit the same message by an AM transmitter? So now you can calculate what is uh, carrier power. So if you're using uh, the relation between carrier power and transmitted power for a DSBSE waveform, so then we can find the carrier power with respect to DSBSE transmission. Otherwise, you have to use the, the relation for, uh, with respect to AM transmission. You can calculate both the carrier power. So if you want to calculate the carrier power, it is uh, 2 by M square. Total power into 2 by M square, 5.56 yes. kilowatt. So this is the carrier power. Now, so this carrier power, this, this much amount of power is required if you want to transmit the carrier signal alone. Now, if you are using a conventional AM, transmitter. So what will be the total power? See here, the carrier power is 5.56 kilowatt and DSBSE, it means only the sidebands. The sideband power is one kilowatt. Now, what will be the total power if you are using a conventional AM transmitter? For a conventional AM, you have to add the carrier plus the sidebands, right? So this DSBSE is carrier suppressed. So this is the carrier power. So if you add both these power, it will be around uh, five plus one. 6.56 kilowatt. So you have to add both these powers for, for transmitting using an AM transmitter. So the, we require 5.56 to ca uh, transmit the carrier component along with the existing one kilowatt for the sidebands when M equal to 0.6.